Hello everyone, uh, this is Juan Freire and in this opportunity I will be presenting uh, Enabling Open and Remote Access Sensing on Small Satellites, the ORAS project and this is a presentation the, which is destined to be presented in the Open Source CubeSat Workshop in Madrid, Spain in September 2018 uh, and I'm one of the several co-authors of this work uh, May, most of which are students from a uh, master course uh, held in the CONAE uh, Institute, which is uh, the Argentine Space Agency, also called Comisión Nacional de Actividades Espaciales. So the context of the presentation are uh, small satellites. Uh, small satellites is a concept that is re-emerging, uh, and I say re-emerging because uh, small satellites are not are not new. Uh, small satellites has been used from the early 90s, and uh, there has been like a renewed interest in in this type of spacecraft, uh, particularly because they are very small, they are lightweight. But uh, a new paradigm is being built, built uh, based upon two key points. One of them is the adoption of uh, well up-to-date consumer technologies and basically uh, electronics and uh, microelectronics components which has been highly optimized and developed for a wide market in, in, in ground application, in earth application and are trying to be uh, used in space uh, because of their very and uh, their excellent performance and or memory capacity and so on and the problem is that this, this product might not be so reliable and therefore, uh, using them in, in large and complex and specific spacecraft uh, is, is generally forbidden. And therefore, uh, smaller satellites are being targeted for using this type of, of, of consumer technologies. In this context, another aspect is also has to do with the rapid development cycles, where um, uh, also a, a project paradigm is trying to be changed from traditional larger spacecraft with very tight and very uh, structure uh, development cycles to more agile process, more closer to what industry or IT industry management models are, are looks like today. Uh, so this is the context where the, this presentation is, is, very, is very discussed. Open and remote access sensing is basically a mean to share the utilization of in-orbit resources of a small skip set uh, among several users with autonomous, autonomous and potentially isolated ground stations. I will discuss this in the future, in, in, in the following slide, how how it is achieved and how, what is the particular objective of the Orbit project. Uh, this concept and this uh, presentation was basically developed as a joint effort of professors and students of the Satellite Instrumentation Math Master, which is held at the Julich Institute at the Argentine Space Agency or CONAE, which is located in, in Cordoba, in Cordoba, Argentina. So. To take a look at the Oros motivation, I will propose a first quick study. And this is just uh, two uh, typical components or subsystems that one can commercially uh, acquire from, this is a particular vendor, very popular vendor for, for, for CubeSat, which is called Ground Space. And if we take a look on the left, we see that we're talking about an, uh, what can be seen as an onboard computer, which is actually is also used as a transponder uh, unit but uh, I want to focus on the properties of, of this component and we see that uh, this is not an expensive uh, subsystem, this is a very small subsystem and also very power efficient, targeted for CubeSat, this is very small and this type of subsystem are already showing quite remarkable processing performance and storage performance at least in comparison with what we see in traditional space components which are not um, QSAT based, but are based like for a uh, general and, and more reliable space mission to say somehow. And uh, this particular uh, component is talking about a, a dual ARM Cortex processor with clocking at 800 megahertz, which is quite quite a, a powerful processor, and it's already including uh, one gigabyte of, of RAM and 32 gigabyte of, of non-volatile storage, and this can easily grow to maybe a few hundred gigabytes with barely no effort and also no very, very small cost for, for a traditional cube submission. Uh, but this is the, this remarkable increase in performance in terms of storage and processing is unfortunately is not seen in, uh, in communications equipment. And let's go to the, to, the to the subsystem on the right. We are talking about Nano.com, which is also a very popular 
uh, skill sets of system uh, working on the UHF and VHF band. And we can see that the data rates of the systems are ranging in a few kilobits per second to a few to a few hundred kilobits per second of data rate. Um, this does not mean that the technology is not up to the challenge of going higher than this, but this means that actually the channel characteristics of such skill sets are really uh, narrow in terms of uh, available uh, throughput, and the equipment has to basically keep up the data rate that can be accommodated in these type of channels. And if we make a very quick calculation, as, such as the one we show below, uh, with this type of data rate in an average 10 minute window of communication or of, a, of a pass of a satellite over a given ground station, we can see that only a few megabytes can be downloaded. And in, even in higher data rates, talking about one megabit per second and so on, we are still not using uh, barely 1% of the storage capacity that is offered by uh, the product here on the left, which are talking about the nanomine set set seven zero 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 from from GOM space. So uh, this is a particular study and a particular analysis, but in, in general, this applies to most uh, sub subsystem available, uh, commercially available nowadays. So in general, uh, the ORA's motivation is that the state of the art technology for spacecraft or small, small spacecraft tend to provide the following features. Well, talking about very large storage in terms of uh, capacity uh, and data storage volume. We are also talking about significant processing capabilities, um, such as this type of processors, which are also very, they are interestingly very similar to what the processing we are seeing in our most smartphones nowadays, which is also the same principle basically being put in orbit in, in the cube submissions. But what we are not seeing is that an inc a, a, a corresponding increase in the data rates for, for, for downloading uh, large, these large volumes of, of data from, from space. And again, this is constrained by available in-orbit power and limited ant antenna gains that basically limit the channel uh, throughput uh, that can be obtained from, from a given CubeSat. And this has not necessarily has anything to do with the with the RF technology or the or the or the communication protocol limitations, but are really physical limitations or typically seen in the CubeSat. As a consequence, what we have is a downlink communication channel, which quickly becomes a bottleneck in, in any type of, of satellite architecture. So the objective of us is to widen the downlink bottleneck by doing the following. Allowing several ground stations equipped with standard communication hardware, which is like publicly available in the market, and can be in, accessed by, by any, any customer around the world. And by using this such a standard communications, anyone around the world can access, command, manage, and download instrument acquisition from the CubeSat. As crazy as this sounds, this can still be is, is a very interesting way of tackling the problem of the downlink bottleneck because uh, what we are basically doing is, is just widening the time access for our satellite and therefore optimizing and, and increasing the downlink date, the, the data downlink that, you, that we can get in such a low uh, throughput channels that we were discussing. So this is somehow analogous to making and to creating a very large distributed ground station all around the world. Uh, again, another thing that's also behind ours is that any acquisition that can be commanded by anyone, uh, they might be previewed by using thumbnails, like smaller resolution version of the acquisition, uh, but not necessarily downloading in the end, so that users can here on ground select which is what, which of their acquisitions uh, are going to be finally downloaded instead instead of uh, just downloading the full resolution version directly and therefore uh, saving significant uh, amount of, of the channel resources. But obviously, such an approach is uh, has several challenges to be met. And they are not few, and they are not easy to, to tackle, and is the, the basic uh, discussion uh, presented in these slides. So, ORAS requires of non-trivial but highly developed protocols that enables three, three aspects. One of them is secure access. If you are saying that anyone around the world can just buy a material, can just buy a 
simple ground station equipment and access this, this satellite, we need to provide a secure access to authorized and authenticated users, uh, users to command a specific uh, task and carefully chose functions to the platform. Um, we are going to discuss in the following slides what we are proposing to tackle this problem and an another aspect of this first point is also accounting. I mean, if users are going to access the satellites, then it's not only a matter of being able to command and control such a satellite, but also being able to be restricted to make a, a utilization of a restricted utilization um, of, uh, of um, a second point is a resource management. So uh, we have a, a set of resources on board. We're talking about payloads, of, of, in this case, for instance, observation payloads. We're talking about memories. We're talking about processors and so on. So the correct utilization of these resources uh, is, 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 is crucial in order to uh, avoid the users making uh, like a malicious utilization of such resources uh, or to, let's say, uh, overbook memories or overbook power or so on uh, in order to guarantee that the satellite can still be operating uh, while being shared among different users. Uh, a key, uh, an interesting point also in this point, in point number two, uh, which actually drives us to point number three, is that these users might not be necessarily connected. Um, I mean, the satellite might not be necessarily connected to the main ground station while being commanded by these users. So this means that the satellite has to be quite smart in managing these, these resources, and this is actually drive us to point number three, which is onboard scheduling. Uh, since, which basically says, since the mission control cannot be continuous in contact with the CubeSat, all functionalities, particularly in scheduling decisions, has to be performed autonomously mostly by the CubeSat. This means that if a user is asking me to take a picture of a given region of the world in such a way that uh, the storage I would need to use to store such such acquisition uh, is not available at that, at that time, the satellite has to be uh, smart and autonomous enough in order to deny such a command for the user uh, commanding the satellite at that moment. And this has to be done, again, without intervention from the main uh, ground station, the main mission control center. So the secure access point, how, how, how are we thinking on, on tackle this problem? And it has to do with using uh, an authentication, uh, authorization, authentication and accounting server, uh, which should be accessed via internet by any interested remote user uh, willing to command and, uh, and control uh, the um, demand observations from, from the satellite. Uh, initially, this AAA server uh, will be located in Conai facilities, um, and the interested user will be provisioned it with, a, with an according key to access the satellite, and also the satellite will be provisioned in advance in order to receive uh, the, the, the user's uh, request. Uh, again, this user account and user's key will be provided with, with given quotas and priorities in order to manage and control the limited onboard resources of the satellite. Regarding resource management, uh, we're, we need to have a very tight and, con and close control on payload utilization, satellite power, uh, this has to do also with the satellite being on eclipse or being on sunlight exposure. This is, this is, there are going to be different differentiated uh, treatment to commands involving uh, tasks in these two different uh, sunlight exposure types. We're talking about uh, memory utilization and also the processing required to process the observation and so on. And this type of administration and management is going to be based on what can be seen as a live schedule of uh, satellite observation, processing, and downlink task. And this, we say live schedule because maybe initially a given user is demanding the satellite to perform an observation at any given moment in the future and again in a place in the, in, in the Earth. Uh, and later on, another user has come in, in line of sight from the satellite and um, this, uh, this user may, might be uh, demanding a, a re an observation which is basically conflicting with the first one from the first user. And then as priority systems need to come into play and the satellite will need to choose which demand to, to honor. 
and this has to do with priorities and this has to do also with the life schedule that can be changing uh, throughout the orbit uh, time of the satellite without intervention of a central mission control center. So this life schedule is going to be kept alive on, on board and will be changed and will be evolving as users make demands on, on, on resources of the satellite. Uh, Preemption needs to be guaranteed on board without immediate intervention from CONAI or the central uh, uh, central mission control. And preemption means uh, exactly this example I gave a few seconds ago. If one user is demanding a particular activity or a particular tax task that conflicts with a previous request from a lower priority user, then the preemption should take place and the first uh, demand must be overridden and must be moved away in order to honor the, the second uh, demand which has been made from, from a higher priority user. Um, it, obviously, this happens in verse, in the, in the other side, if there is a user that's making a demand which is already booked by a higher priority user, this user can be instantaneously be made aware that such a uh, task cannot be held and cannot be concluded by the satellite. Um, obviously, this allowed uh, from, from, from the Central Mission Control Center to preload rules on how these resources are going to be utilized um, on board in such a way that uh, no intervention can be uh, held from, from this central uh, entity. And this takes us to the third point, which is onboard scheduling. And onboard scheduling uh, is basically focused on, on, on all the onboard resources, but particularly on power budget. This is this is crucial in order not to uh, not to to drive the satellite into safe mode because of several tasks being commanded by different users. So this is fun. This is this is fundamental. Having an intelligence on board um, to decide on the resource utilization and to keep this life schedule alive and making this schedule to meet all the rules that were preloaded by the central. Uh, satellite control center. Um, as we mentioned previously, user can be immediately informed if, if their request was included on the schedule, uh, on this live schedule kept on board, and also they can also be informed about the probability of meeting the objective given a history of five priority users on the way before meeting the objectives. And this means that uh, if, I, if there is a history or, or of users making demanding a given type of observation, and I know that my schedule is free now and there is a, a low priority use in make, making a, a given demand, uh, then I will be able to inform this user, hey, you know, uh, you have a low priority user and you want this to be, have to happen, this observation to happen, but let me tell you that before this I'm going to see visit five other uh, users that are higher priority than you, therefore your command has a given probability of succeeding. And this can also make a very interesting room for implementing like machine learning and artificial intelligence features on board to command and control the mission uh, with a minimal intervention from a from a central control center so let me quickly go over what is the volcano project which is a particular mission uh, being uh, developed by uh, the master students nowadays which basically tries to implement the ORAS philosophy. And the Volcano Project is a, it's a, it's a project focused on, on, on observing volcanic activities via a thermic camera, which is a commercial of the, of the shared industrial camera, uh, which is going to be mounted in, in a LEO CubeSat, uh, flying at around 600 kilometers, 90, 98 degrees of inclination, and with a six month lifetime. Uh, this is a, as a, as a 640 thermic camera, so it's, a, it's an industry available camera with a 640 by 480 pixels, uh, which give this uh, 80 kilometers and 115 kilometers cross track swath uh, of observation. And from the particular space agency in Argentina, they're interested in uh, observing obviously the volcanic activities in the Argentinian mountains, but the satellite is going to be available and flying also all around the world. So. This is quite, it's quite interesting to, to see that such uh, payload can also be shared and used about, among uh, other ob observation uh, users uh, around the world from, from other countries. So I don't want to go into the details just to make the, the time frame, but a student has made already 
different communication architecture studies about uh, the data rates and about uh, what's the payload generation rate and so on. And this type of study not only applies to the particular case of the CONAE, the ice space agency using the observation from the local mountains, but also from other users around the world making commands to observe a given image and downloading them at their own ground stations without intervention from, for the Argentinian Space Agency, except for the authorization and authentication of the users. Again, I repeat this, this, this point, which is very important. Um, but we have all, in this particular Vulcanio project, we have all this communication architecture already selected and, and, and studied. Also, um, I don't want to go into details because of time, but we also have like different reliable architectures, how this uh, camera is interfaced with also different MEAN, FMECA, uh, different foul mode studies and so on, as well as, as, as a different set of component selection, which is uh, there is really nothing new on this. This is a traditional uh, satellite design process. Um, what is interesting to see is that this is basically a particular mission which is designed and up uh, in a traditional CubeSat way. Uh, but the philosophy of using the onboard resources is shared and, and basically is based on this ORAS uh, philosophy we just discussed. Uh, so, in this context, the main software, the main challenge is software development. This, this, this is a space regression integrated software that has to work uh, from a ground perspective in terms of secure access um, and determining, determining uh, resource management rules and that actually feeds onboard scheduling algorithms uh, that has to be met uh, on, 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 without intervention from the ground station. So this is like a very complex space integrated software framework that has to be developed uh, for the Vulcanio project and eventually for any type of aura missions that we'll find in the future. Uh, we are actually discussing on how this approach can be made open source in the future, on what are the rules, what are the challenges, how, what, what is the best way of doing this. This is a discussion which is being held at the moment because uh, this is not a Vulcano project uh, dependent software but can be a general software for other type of observation or even communication mission around the world. So to close, um, well, we introduced we introduced uh, all ORAS uh, as a means of enabling share access of resources in order to overcome the bottleneck uh, in the downlink channel. Um, we discussed the three key enabling technologies: secure access, resource management, and onboard scheduling. Um, we also they discuss a particular mission that can implement this uh, aura philosophy and we highlighted the main challenge uh, as being the software development of this space restaurant inter integrated software framework um, that needs to be need to implement this type of, of, of features in order to become ORAS uh, enabled and this is being held as I mentioned because by smart master student of the CONAS master's uh, space in instrumentation and most of master students' final works are actually focusing on, on this philosophy. And so uh, we really expect uh, the Volcano project to, to fly a, in, in the near future. So uh, I thank you for your time and I leave you here my email to reach me. And uh, obviously I can, I can contact and reach the students or the CONAE personnel in case uh, of any interest in any questions or interested in, in the presented uh, in this presentation. So again, I appreciate your time and, and I wait for, for any questions or queries to my personal email. Thank you very much.